All right, we have a set of stock 2.5 Fox uh, rate, uh, shock caps off of the 22 talon. Um, he had upgraded to basically, uh, he upgraded his shock caps with Weller shock caps, but basically, and you can get it at various other brands that have the uh, Schrader valves instead of uh, the stock OEM uh, rubber ball pellet, uh, similar to like a basketball fill uh, that have a known issue of leaking down over time. Uh, this one still is on the stock caps, so we, looking at these uh, stock ones we took off, we thought we could uh, just drill out the uh, the existing valve assembly in there. Uh, so we, we drilled out the old stock caps with a uh, 2164 drill bit and then tapped it with an uh, eighth inch NPT. And then I just bought uh, some eighth inch NPT, uh, high temperature, high pressure Schrader valves. Uh, they're basically worth 850 a piece. Uh, so overall, you could do this whole replace your your shock caps on your own machine uh, for basically thirty five dollars as opposed to buying uh, somebody else's for um, sixty five seventy dollars uh, for a pair. Uh, so I guess it's a pretty good way to do it yourself. Uh, the only downside is these are going to be more exposed, but. Uh, I think for a non-race machine, that's that would probably be okay. Uh, you could recess it a little bit. The uh, the shock caps are pretty thick. They have uh, about uh, you know the the Schrader valve only threads in about halfway. So uh, I guess anybody that's has issues with their shocks leaking down, they might look into doing an upgrade like this. All right, I used some uh, Teflon paste and uh, got all the Schraders installed on the uh, old end caps. And you could do this on basically the end caps that are on your your stock shocks. Uh, you're just you'd be down for you know a little bit uh, unless you had all the stuff uh, ready to go right away. Uh, so now I just need to take the old end caps off of this one. Uh, basically, to do that, uh, you, you need to release the nitrogen pressure. Uh, this is just like a 330 second drill bit, and you want to drill up through the ball valve uh, that's the little rubber ball valve that's in there currently. And back it out and it should release some pressure. Yep, see that one? could tell uh, didn't have very much nitrogen in it, which is why we're doing this uh, cap change right now. Uh, the one on the other side, it had uh, still some nitrogen in it, so it let some pressure out, but that one was basically empty, which is the whole purpose of this uh, upgrade. Uh, so now that the nitrogen's out of it, uh, you can push the stock cap up and uh, get the clip ring out. There's a, basically, this pushes up. I probably have to do it with two hands. And there's a snap ring in here, um, really just a, a circular ring that you can pull out and then that will allow this cap to come out. Uh, so let me get to that point and show you that. So here you see I got the stock cap uh, in the ring out. Uh, basically this, you just push this cap up maybe, after you let the nitrogen pressure out of it, let the push the cap up maybe a quarter inch and you'll expose this ring this ring sits in this this groove right here. Uh, you just take a pick and, and pick this ring out. And then that will allow the cap to slide out. Uh, it's basically just held in by an O-ring at that point in time. Um, so I just took two screwdrivers and basically uh, worked it back and forth to get it out of there, not that hard. Uh, and then now that this cap is out, Put your new cap in or you can basically what we did on the uh, old stock caps that we had was drill uh, this this piece out that had the rubber you can see where we drill through the the rubber valve right there drill that out uh, I think 
is 21 64 or 27 64 whatever the the drill size for uh, eighth inch NPT is uh, drill that out and then tap it and uh, put your your traders that you bought in uh, and then you can have uh, basically upgraded shot caps for a uh, quarter of the price of buying them uh, from a retailer all right I have the front caps back in with the new tapped trader valves installed. Uh, last thing you're gonna wanna do, uh, jack the machine up to make sure that uh, the suspension is all the way drooped out. Uh, the reason you wanna do that is there's an internal floating piston in these reservoirs. And if it's sitting on the sitting down with no nitrogen pressure in it, that reservoir is gonna be in a different location. And when you charge it to your PSI, it's gonna be different than basically what the the uh, stock PSI is going to be, and it's not going to be repeatable at either because you're going to have different different pressures all the time, uh, depending on how far down it's riding. Um, so you want it all the way jacked up, fully full extension. Um, this might be the step that some people have trouble with. I just happen to have a shock nitrogen shock charged uh, tool. Uh, I think I made it for about 150, 200 dollars. Because uh, I have a big pre-runner truck and I do shock changes on that truck all the time. So I went ahead and made this. Uh, it's basically just a nitrogen tank with a welding regulator. Um, this is a HVAC hose, a HVAC refrigerant hose uh, to a high pressure ball valve with another gauge and a uh, power chuck. Uh, you can also take your shocks off and um, take it to a, a shop. Uh, maybe a welding shop might be able to do this or some sort of... Uh, bicycle shop or, or, sh or shock shop um, but you're going to want to recharge the, your shocks uh, I believe stock on Fox is 150 PSI so you're going to want a 150 to 200 PSI range that basically prevents cavitation in the shock as the pistons moving uh, cavitation in the oil as the pistons moving through um, it keeps it at a higher pressure so it's less likely to cavitate uh, before you engage the pressure on this reservoir, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's pulled down and seated against that ring, because if that ring's not all the way seated and you start to push 150 PSI into this uh, reservoir, it's gonna shoot that camp right out. Um, so get, uh, basically I have it, my regulator set at the welding uh, machine, turn the ball valve on. Uh, you can hear, and initially it pushes past the Schrader valve there because uh, they're not really intended to have pressure from that side, but then turn this power chuck and you can hear it basically equalizing. Uh, let it sit there and equalize for a bit. Then remove the, uh, loosen the Schrader. And I close the valve. And then I can take this chuck off the Schrader and put the normal cap back on and uh, that's how I charge shocks.